What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and a pretty special video. Again, I'm down at Southern Sky Motors. These guys are too good to me. They have got a stunning 63 plate Ferrari F12 Berlinetta right here right behind me, ready to go for a drive. Grant picked it up yesterday and it is now here for sale. I'm gonna run through some of the spec on this car and we're gonna take it for a quick drive. I am so, so excited about driving Ferrari's top of the range, non-limited V12, because obviously they've got the TDF and they've got the LaFerrari, but they are limited cars. This is an incredible V12. I've seen many in London. This is one of the best examples that I've seen. It's got the really nice wheels, black with cream interior. Let's check it out. Let's talk about what the hell I'm doing right here, just about to drive a Ferrari F12. And let's talk about my history as well of driving Ferraris on the road. This car has got the big wheels. It has got the 20 inch five spoke or multi five spoke, They're actually a 10 spoke, but the design is amazing on them. It's got the yellow Scuderia shields, yellow brake calipers, reversing camera, nav, Bluetooth, all of that stuff. And the crazy stuff happens inside. We have got the Crema Daytona seats with the stitched headrest Ferrari right there. We've also got the carbon fiber driving zone, as you might be able to see there, where right here is where lights, LED lights come on telling you when to change gear. And all through this car, it is just in perfect condition. It is a 2013 63 plate. It has done 4,800 miles, so less than 5,000 miles, and is up for sale for 225,000 pounds. Can't believe that I'm gonna to get to drive this car right now. And it just so happens that I turned 25 a couple of days ago, and then they got this beast in. And luckily, I'm allowed to drive it. So down here so far, I've driven an AMG GTS, which is a super sports car, a bit of a GT car. Drove the Aston Martin Virage, which is definitely a luxury GT car. Now, all of a sudden, I'm about to jump behind the wheel of 700 brake horsepower plus the ultimate pinnacle supercar GT, just a out and out supercar. I'm just, I'm just, I'm kind of gobsmacked that I've been given this opportunity to drive that car. Let's quickly touch upon the other car that I've driven on public roads that is a Ferrari. Yes, it was the Prindeville La Ferrari. And I know that that's gonna sort of cause a lot of questions as to how the hell I got insured on that La Ferrari. The La Ferrari had special car insurance that basically allowed anyone that Prindeville let drive it or gave permission to drive it. It's very confusing, um, but it is definitely a special insurance policy, whereas the majority of them won't let anyone under 25 drive them. So lucky, I am 25 now, and I'm just about to jump in this F12. Let's grab the key and go for a drive. I feel like I need to get in the zone to drive in this car. I feel like I need to have my wits about me. I feel like I need to be as, I can't even feel like I need a race helmet now. <laughs> so, here we are in the interior of the Ferrari F12. Have I done that yet? <laughs> and we are going to put it in wet mode, I think, to begin with, because it is about four degrees outside. Even though the sun has been shining, we are out near Horsham in West Sussex, meaning that some of the roads are, or well, haven't been hit by sun, or if they have, the ice probably hasn't cleared. Where's the uh, park? Here, that is automatic. So unlike the Aston Martin and the Mercedes, this car does not lurch forward when you put it in first gear. And so yeah, we've got a range of 32 miles to begin with, because Grant took it home last night. No, you didn't take it home, you collected it last collected night. It, yeah. You collected it last night, <laughs> meaning we're gonna have to go and stop for fuel, so we're gonna have to fill up this massive V12 engine. So we'll cruise there in wet mode. I'll get myself accustomed to the, the positioning, the driving position and just the overall. Please don't spin the wheels. Ah. And to begin with, so this car starts in auto. I didn't think that it would start in auto, but I don't need to press the paddles. I'm in fifth gear already. Sixth gear now. This is cool. This is really cool. I wish I could have Sam's point of view glasses right about now because this car looks awesome from where I'm sitting. Maybe I should invest. So we're gonna take it easy. I've already lost one mile of fuel. We're gonna take it easy to the fuel station, fill it up, 
and then we're going to take it out for a quick blast. Do the Southern Sky Motors test drive route like we have been doing on the AMG GTS and the Aston Martin. I suppose compare them because they're all GT cars in their own right. They've all got those sorts of personality traits of a GT car, all very comfortable, all suited for covering long motorway miles, but they've also got that split personality, again in their own different right, of becoming pretty antisocial, pretty fun. <laughs> This is this car is gonna be nuts, I can tell. There's the fuel light. The fuel light comes on a lot later than like the Lambo comes on at like 95 miles of fuel range. Because I think they probably think that Lamborghini drivers are not as intelligent. So they need reminding every time they start the car. You got 95 miles. You got 94 now! 93! And it counts you down basically until you've got zero miles, but I normally fill it up when I've got about 95 miles left in the range. Whereas this, we've got down to 30 miles, and now it tells us that we need fuel. The thing with the Ferrari is, and I suppose all modern Ferraris, they're engineered to be completely silent when you're wanting to cruise. Right now, all I can hear is road noise. The Ferrari 458, again, is completely silent. The FF, silent. Even the LaFerrari, their flagship limited halo car that replaced the Enzo, completely silent on startup. And if you keep it below three and a half thousand RPM, it will continue being silent. And I think that's what Ferrari really want to achieve is that they they can be used every day and not be annoying. But as soon as you go over three, three and a half, four thousand RPM, the valves open and this V12 wails. And I have heard them at full throttle in London and they sound incredible. I'm going to click into sport. See if what that does. Still in auto. These paddles are huge on this car. Come all the way around. You can't miss them on, in a corner. First time the valves have been open, we are in sport mode. See, I manually went down those gears and not once did it go above the rev range for the butterfly valves to open. It's just oh, we got a flash on the LED as well. The carbon carbon fibre driving zone just flashed to me, Sammy. Change gear back now. We've got some fuel. We've got Not a lot. <laughs> just under <laughs> half a tank and it's saying 93 mile range. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be able to get that up with my eco driving skills. Only been 
my only experience with an F12, other than today, is I was a passenger in an F12. And I spent more time sideways than I did in a straight line. So, driver of that said F12, if you're watching this, <laughs> how am I doing, man? <laughs> well, I'm by no means testing the, the handling, testing the sort of, or even putting it on the limit. I'm literally just tentatively squeezing the throttle just to get the exhaust, get that power coming. And I'm already in love with it. Completely different to the AMG completely different to the Aston Martin. Aston Martin and Ferrari both V12s but the torque delivery is just completely different in both cars. The AMG is a turbo charge by turbo but do you really feel the turbos? Probably not and after driving that with Southern Sky Motors like I have sort of got a soft spot for this, uh, the AMG GTS but you can buy two AMG GTSs for the price of this and like you're just thinking wow price difference but you pay for the brand you pay for the heritage you pay for the whole package that you get from Ferrari and I'd love to spend more time in this car even on a track but oh man such a cool car you can cruise you can do all of the stuff the Aston Martin does and then when you want to you can just <laughs> it is lightning quick getting a feel for it, getting that first experience in this car and getting, and getting it under my belt. I've got, I haven't got enough experience for one to put it in race mode. I wouldn't know what to do if this car decided to buy me and, and flip around, I wouldn't know what to do. So I need to get more experience under my belt of, what the, of how to drive and how to drive cars like this before I can really start putting, to, putting them to the test. But as first, as first experiences go, are we gonna go that way? Yeah, man, right. As first experiences go, yeah, this car is awesome. Love it. And maybe one day, maybe one day this car will <laughs> decide to depreciate enough. Because <laughs> that's the only way. <laughs> oh, one day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> amazed at how easy it is to drive and how comfortable it is because you kind of you kind of expect this sort of package from Ferrari to be almost out of hand almost uncontrollable but I think spending 10-15 minutes in this car I feel just as comfortable as I was driving the Aston Martin I think the AMG was slightly a little bit more intimidating because it's just got a really long nose and you do sit a little bit lower got the wing mirrors right up against you and you just feel like and it's got the AMG brand and I think we drove it in the wet as well so I was kind of like uh, I don't want to push my foot down I really want to drive that AMG GTS again I think it's such a cool car it looks amazing and I suppose AMG GTS is kind of like a baby F12 love the steering wheel it's like a one, one two three four five six hexagon about as sensible as you can be in an F12 without me trying to bite your head off, I think. <laughs> Let's just have a little feel for the steering. I just, I just want to wait until I'm in a straight line before I start putting more than 30% throttle on this car because I can imagine the back end is twitchy and I've seen F12s in London pretty twitchy from the rear and with as sad as it is we're now on the way back to Southern Sky Motors and my time in this F12 has is, is nearly up so I, I think the best way to summarize it is even though it is an animal even though it is a beast that I'm sure with someone with the right driving capabilities, once they unleash that V12 in this package that Ferrari have put together in such a beautiful car, 
it will just become endless, endless fun. I've had tons of fun and I've barely put my foot flat to the floor. I've just been doing 70, 80% throttle, very smooth accelerations and still can't get over the V12 sound. What an unbelievable car, super comfortable. The Daytona seats like, are obviously very classic with Ferrari with the fingers that they've got, the design, very, very comfy. And I just have to say, this car is not as intimidating as I was expecting it to be. But again, I definitely haven't even pushed this car 10%. This car is not even sweating. And we've just been on a really awesome drive. I'm sweating more than the Ferrari is. That's how easy and seamless this car is. Beautiful car. We're now gonna head back to Southern Sky Motors. So I'm just gonna enjoy the drive. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and fingers crossed I can get my hands on some more awesome cars and Southern Sky Motors continue to just get awesome stock in beautiful cars and I'll always be there to grab the keys and go for a 10-15 minute test drive so thanks for watching give it a thumbs up if you love the Ferrari and click that subscribe button if you haven't already I look forward to seeing you very very soon guys thank you for watching take care guys <laughs> please do not buy a Range Rover for the Euro trip <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> okay. I guess the thing which is amazing about this car is that you can have the absolute luxury of Range Rover, which is what I think everyone loves. Not only luxury, technology. Technology, but I mean, it's just such a comfy place to be, such mm. a nice place to be. But then you've got the lunacy 